a huge step forward, it felt like, for the Senate even getting this voted on over the weekend, Sahil. But where now do we go in terms of adjusting the Senate version to bring the House on board, particularly when the president is throwing out there the possibility of a 22 percent corporate tax rate, not a 20 percent? Right, Julia, the vote on uh, Saturday morning, early Saturday morning, just before 2 a.m., was probably the toughest part of this whole operation. They got it through the Senate with 51 votes. Uh, the only Republican who defected was Bob Corker, the senator from Tennessee, who is retiring over concerns about the deficit. Now they have to reconcile that bill with the House version and send one bill to the president for his signature. Now, the, the Republicans in the Senate have a much narrower margin than the House. They can only lose two senators before the bill collapses. House Republicans can lose 22 of their members, which is why the bill is likely to look more like the Senate bill eventually than the House bill. There are some key differences. One that's been getting a lot of attention lately is the inclusion of, or, or rather, the, the preservation of the corporate AMT, the alternative minimum tax, and preserving a big part of the individual alternative minimum tax. The House bill repeals both. The Senate bill at the last minute made some changes to keep them. Another thing to keep your eye on is the Obamacare individual mandate repeal. This is some explosive politics that could mess things up a little bit. Uh, 51 uh, Senate Republicans, of course, supported that. One of them, Susan Collins, says she wants Obamacare stabilization measures in order to gain her vote for the final package. There are some moderate House Republicans, too, who may not be thrilled with the fact that premiums are projected to go up for uh, what, what would certainly be many of their constituents if this individual mandate is repealed. All right, so we're going to be talking a ton about taxes over the coming days, but something very important and that's very imminent is threat of a government shutdown. They need to pass a spending bill. What do we need to watch for in the days ahead? So the government is projected to run out of money on Friday at midnight unless Congress acts. There will be a shutdown unless the House and the Senate can pass a bill to extend that. Now, Republican leaders in both chambers are, are looking at a plan to extend that deadline by two weeks, give themselves some breathing room to get the tax bill done and to get some negotiations on a year-end bill. Um, there are several issues that Democrats want, and they need to provide at least eight Democratic votes in the Senate in order to break a filibuster and prevent a shutdown. Democrats want Obamacare stabilization measures. Uh, they want a fix for, for the undocumented uh, DREAMers, a, a DACA fix, and they want an extension of the Children's Health Insurance Program. They have the ability to filibuster a government funding bill if they don't get their priorities, and that's where we should keep an eye on in the, in the coming days. They haven't taken a position, Democratic leaders in the House or the Senate, on this issue, but I think that's what could really gum things up.